Our community continues to focus on successful aging by living a healthy life, by engaging socially, physically, intellectually, and spiritually. I'm hopeful today's event will be engaging to you all, and especially to those challenged with end-stage age-related macular degeneration. Now, macular degeneration makes things hard to see, so it would seem quite natural that a telescope that makes things bigger and easier to see would be beneficial, right? Now, over the last decade, Sandy and I have recognized that on the only way to help macular degeneration patients to see better and retain their independence is to make things bigger with magnification. Not eyeglasses, not contact lenses, not medicine, not surgery until today. Um, an Israeli doctor invented a telescope that was much, much smaller. In fact, it's so small it's the size of a pea. And it's small enough so that the skilled surgeons with us today can now implant them in the eye for the very first time ever. What this procedure entails is a regular basic cataract surgery that we've extended to accommodate this telescope. So essentially what the, with the surgery what happens is we, we do lots of different testing in advance. We prepare the patient, they come into the operating room, we implant the telescope, and obviously this procedure is more extensive than a regular cataract surgery and takes a little bit more time. On average, regular cataract surgery, as you might know, takes about 10 minutes. This is expected to take between 20 to 40 minutes, depending on the eye. Our job is to take care of our patients with macular degeneration. We're, we're specialists in macular degeneration, and our purpose in, as being part of this team is to um, make certain that the macular degeneration that we're, we're looking at is stable and that you're an appropriate candidate for the telescope. As the surgeons, we are going to have to deal with the eye. So we're checking to make sure that the cornea is healthy, the clear window and the health. Uh, the health of the clear window in the front of the eye can sustain the surgery. We'll also look to make sure that the pupil dilates adequately to make the surgery technically feasible. And we'll do a good deal of the aftercare and managing the implant after the surgery is complete. When the patients come in for an evaluation, uh, we look at the, the retina and confirm the diagnosis. We'll run uh, an OCT that measures the thickness of the macula and a fluorescein angiogram where we inject some dye intravenously. And as it circulates through the eye, we take pictures. And then based upon the results of our exam, um, and those two tests, we um, establish the diagnosis and then, um, you know, look at the patient to determine whether or not they're um, a candidate from a retina standpoint uh, for the IMT. You live in, in an amazing generation. When you look at the things that you've experienced over your lifetime and how technology has changed, uh, the things that we have available to us now um, can save your vision can help you to see better and uh, in the future even bring you beyond that level to where the, the vision can be restored. So uh, I am really grateful to be a part of this team. I've been doing occupational therapy specializing in low vision since 2003 and in the years that I've been doing this, this is the first time that I can actually tell a patient that they will benefit from something that a surgeon does when it's related to low vision. All you guys I know have heads, but no eyes. <laughs> and I'd like to see what color of eyes they have. And that's basically, uh, precisely what the miniature telescope has actually been able to bring back for people who have had the surgery uh, in other states. So um, we're really looking forward to this. Uh, we have many residents that have end-stage age-related macular degeneration, and after analysis with some of these doctors, there may be the opportunity to have very improved vision again, to the point where they may see their grandchildren, may see their children, uh, may walk outside and not need any guide or any assistance, may read a book again, watch TV, and in some cases may even be able to drive. Las Ventanas hosted this event as a, as a means to reach out to the community and our, inter and our residents to bridge that gap, that we are the only CCRC here in Nevada. As such, we are afforded great uh, opportunities to partner with organizations such as uh, Yesnik Vision Center and other partners out in the community and provide that to our residents 
and to the general public. So this was a wonderful opportunity to do just such a thing. For many patients that this has been done, uh, patients are able to do more daily functions. They can, for example, open up their mail and able to read their mail. They could see a loved one's face where they couldn't see that before. Just the basic, regular things that most people take for granted, um, they, they can have that, those functions at that point. And I'm going to be the first to have this done in the state of Nevada. So in a few weeks, we'll take, I have to have therapy, of course, but I'm looking forward to it. So, oh, so excited.